every single person in this scene deserves an Oscar. Hey guys, it's McKenna, and today I'm filming a requested video, actually. Again, a lot of people were telling me that I should do this and wanted to hear my opinions on the third season of Stranger Things, so here we are! If you don't want Stranger Things Season 3 spoiled for you, or you haven't watched it yet, please go watch that instead of this video, and then after you finish it, eight and a half hours later, come back and watch this video. So basically, the way that I have formatted this video, I guess. Um, I just went back over like the past two days and rewatched the entire third season for the second time. I actually haven't watched it that many times yet. Only two times. And I wrote down all of the major plot points of each episode and highlighted the special ones that I wanted to make sure that I talked about. And then the second part of this video, I made a checklist of all the different theories that I have made over the past probably like year and a half and checked off which ones came true and which ones were very incorrect. So yes, I haven't edited this video yet, but I have a feeling it's going to be a long one. So grab a snack, get comfy, you know, you're just gonna listen to me talk, but um, yeah. This chapter one is called Susie, do you copy? And it starts June 28th, 1984 in Russia. So it basically started a couple months after season two ended, which I think is really cool. They kind of like backtracked to like only a couple months after Elko closed the gate and then these Russians were coming and trying to open it back up and undo all of her hard work. So rude of them. And then they, the laser, they try, they use this laser that like tries to open the gate. Why are they trying to do that for like a weapon or something? I don't know. It's really stupid to me. Um, but then it ends up like exploding and killing a bunch of people and then they don't get to open the gate but they have to try again because they really want the gate open for some reason. And then it goes fast forward in time to a year later um, and it's summer and um, we have some Eleven right there that was in the trailer. I think that scene is a very odd scene of them. Um, it's just, it's just, I don't know. I don't know. Eleven in this season is interesting and Hopper really doesn't like them together and Mike taking up a lot of Eleven's time so basically he comes up with this three inch rule three inch minimum leave the door open three inches I think that this rule is super funny and I love it because it's it's so like Hopper to do that um I don't know I just thought it was funny Another thing that I want to talk about, the moms and Billy's. Billy needs to calm down. Before, like, in season two, it was all Karen that was, like, doing it, and he was just, like, feeding into it. But now, it's, like, Billy is running the show. He is, like, controlling these, like, middle-aged moms, and it's so gross. Afternoon, ladies. Afternoon, Billy. It's definitely an interesting like story arc but it's I like hate it it's entertaining but I also hate it at the same time if that makes sense um Dustin is back from Camp Nowhere now and he also came back with a girlfriend girlfriend her name is Susie he built that like a big antenna thing and tried to talk to like she tried to talk to her because I think she lives in like Ohio or like Utah or something I don't remember where she lives, um, but he ended up reaching this, like, Russian communication thing, um, instead of Susie. It, it, it would reach farther than just Hawkins, and we learn later on that the Russian communication thingy came from Hawkins. I don't know, I just think it's a little, it's a little weird that he didn't catch anything else, but it is a TV show, so... We end this episode with a little intensity for some reason. These rats in Brimborn, the steelworks, they start exploding and magnets start falling and Billy gets kidnapped, taken by the monster in Brimborn and, um, that's basically how that episode ends. And I think the ending to that, the first episode, it's like, oh, it was light and funny and, you know, just like the kids hanging out, whatever. And then it's just like, boom, Billy is taken. Chapter two is called The Mall Rats. And basically now we learn that there are like evil twins that live in the Upside Down that are like, well, they're, I guess they're not like evil twins. It's just like the people that are taken by the monsters 
turn into like hosts basically and I think that, that was really interesting that like like I think it's really cool that like in the second season the mind flayer was trying to kill everyone one by one to make himself like superior and like build his whatever he was building but now he's taking an art he's making an army of people to like do it twice as fast almost it's like really speeding things up and it's real scary so next we're still on Mike and Eleven and Mike is getting caught in a lie by Eleven and it's it's really sad because he even pulled out a false friends don't lie when he knew that he was lying do you lie what no friends don't lie um and Hopper is obviously on cloud nine and Eleven is mad at Mike because he hates happiness, I guess. I don't know. This I think is really interesting because Mike was always like n never really had to deal with that kind of thing, like dating and stuff. And now that he does, he doesn't like really know what to do and that that is bad. And he should have just like told the truth about Hopper threatening him because that I feel like would have made more sense to Eleven than him just lying about, like, his grandma being sick, you know? Miss Driscoll, um, she's a, um, an added character. She ends up calling the newspaper where Nancy and Jonathan works and says that she has fertilizer eating rats. It's weird because these rats are, like, going insane and eating chemicals and, like, this is a very weird plot to have, like, these possessed people eating chemicals like I could have never thought of that that's just like a unique thing I think for the writers and stuff to like come up with like eating chemicals like of all things they start eating chemicals we're back to Mike and Eleven and Mike is getting help from Lucas because apparently Lucas has been dumped by Max five times and they're still together um and Eleven is getting help from Max, and for some reason, Max and Lucas both think it's a great idea for them to go to the mall. And then, finally, Eleven dumps Mike. I dump your ass. I love Eleven, and this breakup doesn't last for long, but this is one of my favorite scenes out of the entire season. Chapter 3 is called The Case of the Missing Lifeguard. This starts off with Max and Elle spying on the guys, and they do not hear the nicest things about them. They're basically saying that um, females are a completely different species, and, like, we act on emotion and not logic. Yeah, we're trying to solve the great mystery of the female species. They don't know they're stupid. Also, Eleven spies on Billy and sees what he's doing with Heather and knows that there's something wrong, but he also, but she also realizes that Billy can see her in the void, kind of, and, like, sense that she's there. Um, so I think that this kind of started Billy and Eleven's little mini connection that they've had throughout the season, um, which I think is, it's really important that they have that connection, um, because he's, like, attached to the Upside Down now and so is she, so I think that that is a really cool Thing. And also at the very end of this episode, um, Miss Driscoll starts eating her, the fertilizer like the rats. Basically, she probably got bitten by one of the rats or got flayed like Heather and Billy and started eating the chemicals because Billy started eating the chemicals. <laughs> but like she wanted, she like really wanted it. Like she was acting like it tasted good. Don't eat chemicals, you guys. Please don't do that. It would kill you. Okay. Chapter four is called The Sauna Test. And basically, the monster is finally shown, and it is the Mind Flayer that came to life. Who called it? I did. Um, <laughs> anyways. Okay, now, the Scoops Troop. I never really talked about them, but I think it's time. They um, add Erica to their team so that she can climb through the vents to get to these Russian boxes that they know something is up with. They know the Russians are there to take over. See you on the other side. Nerds. I think this... Uh, group of four is very interesting they are all completely different it's so odd but it's hilarious and I love all the scenes with them and then the kids lock Billy in the sauna to test him Let me out here! Um, and they figure out that it is indeed Billy who is one of the new hosts first of all for emotional acting Every single person in this scene deserves an Oscar. That scene, like, is so intense. It is so amazing. Like, their their performance 
in this season is so crazy that like the plot line could literally make no sense and just the acting itself could like sell it completely also one thing that i want to talk about that i really think is interesting in this specific scene is billy's language they wrote in an f-bomb for him which i think um i was not expecting it because of all of the other profanity that they use in the season usually for tv 14 or like pg 13 they only get like a certain amount that they can write into the script and with all the other words that they use frequently i didn't think that they could have that in there but apparently they can billy he's rude and he's mean and he's always very angry with the kids like in season two but i don't think he would ever would have ever used that word in that predicament kind of thing um but he did and I think that, that really shows that, like, that was not Billy and he was being possessed by some, like, evil thing that shows that he just really wanted to, like, kill someone. Chapter 5 is called The Flayed. So Joyce and Hopper go on this little trip to find this laser thing, whatever. They find Alexei, who is one of the Russians that is working on the laser. They take him so that they can figure out what is going on with this laser and they end up taking him to Murray to translate. Um, but Alexei is just this really adorable little russian that they're all like oh he's an enemy of the state he's doing terrible things but he's really just like a cute little baby he's, uh... then the kids plus jonathan and nancy go to the hospital to try to talk to miss driscoll but um jonathan and nancy end up getting chased by some of the flayed this is really scary because like the the flayed like will melt and then like they'll like form together to make the mind flares like wherever they are the mind flare can be there and then we'll like chase after people and it's really scary but i think yeah, that's a very you another unique plot line that like i would have never thought of ever just like eating the chemicals like the people literally melting and the rats melting into the mind flare chapter six is called e i'm gonna put it here i don't know how to say it this is a, probably my whole my favorite um scene out of the entire season i believe maybe one of my favorite scenes out of the entire season max and mike get into a little argument over eleven's powers and how she should be using them he gets into this little like meltdown thing ranting and basically said that she's not a machine and they were treating her like a machine and I love her and i can't lose her again you know what are you gonna do Okay, chapter seven is called The Bite. We're almost finished. When the Mind Flayer came to the cabin to get them, um, a little straggler piece of him bit onto L and causes some problems. But they fight him off and it's fine because they're all powerful and together they can take on the world, which is honestly true. So Mike and Eleven share yet another moment still trying to figure out what they're doing with their lives in their relationship. And basically Mike is trying to explain the phrase blank makes you crazy to her and she wasn't getting it because he wasn't like actually saying the word. You never, you never heard that term. You know, like the phrase like blank makes you crazy, like the word which I think is just really funny. And then Lucas ends up finding fireworks and insisting on getting them. So they're all like, why do we need fireworks? But he ends up really helping and we need to stop underestimating Lucas. He knows what he's doing. Joyce and Hopper go to the fair to try to find the kids. Spoiler alert, they're not there. And um, Murray and Alexi want to join on the festivities, but it ends in Alexi's tragic death. Rip. Alexi, it was so sad. I loved him. I think he could have really been a really cool character. He is, he is, you know, the new Barb, the new Bob. He did not deserve to die. Um, there was no reason for him to die. He was just living his life with his cherry slurpees. Um, and it was really sad. Chapter eight is the final episode and it is almost an hour and a half long. It is called the Battle of Starcourt. There ends up being something alive in Eleven's leg, and when Jonathan tries to get it out, it hurts way too bad, and she ends up doing it herself, which she ends up, again, overexerting herself, so her powers really don't work that well after this. Joyce, Hopper, and Murray go to try to take down the laser and the Russians. Um, Joyce and Hopper are trying to get to the laser, but they need a number to get into the safe to get the keys and that number is Planck's constant which is a super famous number i didn't know that but apparently it is so dustin has to use 
the big antenna. I literally forgot its name. It has a name, but I forgot its name. To call Susie because she knows Plank's constant by heart. When he calls Susie, she forces him to sing Never Ending Story in order to get the number and save the world. Reach the stars, fly a fantasy. I think this scene is hilarious because it's literally they're just breaking into song singing this super like upbeat song like happy song while the mind flare is literally chasing a car you know billy is trying to like take uh, like 11 to like give her to the mind flare and like the world is literally ending and they're singing a song it is so hilarious and i love it billy ends up knocking everyone out that's left in the mall and bringing Eleven to the Mind Flare to get her flayed, basically. Lucas uses his fireworks. Lucas coming in clutch, helping him out um, to kind of stall. So Elle ends up, Eleven ends up waking up and like talking to Billy and being like, remember you're Billy, you know, don't try to kill me, please. And he ends up sacrificing himself to save Eleven. This was the big, you know, stab in the heart there it's like this last like half hour is just like one thing after another of just like sadness this was so upsetting like billy is probably like was one of my least favorite characters because he was just so rude to everyone but now that he died i feel like he didn't deserve to die like yeah he was rude and mean and angry but like he really didn't like he wasn't doing this for any like he was possessed so it wasn't really him that was doing it but it was it's so sad um then they eventually um turn the keys and destroy the laser but joyce really had no choice um because hopper was fighting off the russians in the same room with the laser and since it was time and the mind flare was literally about to kill everyone um they had to close the gate um, so she turned the key, Joyce turned the keys and destroyed the laser. It was completely destroyed. And, um, she basically thinks that she killed Hopper, kind of. I mean, she didn't really kill him. She just destroyed the laser, which in turn probably killed him. But I, there are things that are leading to it that make it seem like they didn't actually kill him off. Um, but whatever the case is, that scene is still really sad. And then after that, we kind of get back to the lighter stuff. Also, it turns out that Eleven heard everything that Mike said in the cabin and understood what he was trying to tell her at the store when they were fixing her bite wound and actually said I love you to him which I think is very interesting interesting timing because they are moving away Joyce will Jonathan and Eleven are moving out of Hawkins which is so terrible the like move out scene of them moving out is so sad this is also a really sad part of it. Basically, they move out of Hawkins, and it's over, and then the credits come in, but there's a part after the credits. It's basically, they're back in Russia, and they say that they have an American in this prison. The American is never shown. I've heard some people say that it's Hopper. I personally think it's Hopper. Um, so I've heard some people say that it's Dr. Brenner. I don't really think it's Dr. Brenner. I think Brenner is dead, but anyways. Um, but as, a, like, a... I don't really know if it's necessarily like a killing method or like a like a torture thing for these prisoners um the russians have a demogorgon held captive that they release on the prisoners what a cliffhanger i mean um but the one thing that i don't really understand about this ending is the brain dies the body dies so they close the gate and the mind flare is dead it was dead in the middle of the mall but how is that one demogorgon alive in russia without a mind flare without the gate being open without any energy source something is still there for it to be able to live so yeah that is my opinion on this season it's very lengthy okay so now i want to talk about my theories which this checklist i literally color coded that is how i you can't see it so basically here they all are and they're all sectioned off in different things i would say two thirds i got right i'm trying to think of like any like super unique ones that i got right billy is the new host 
I got that right. I knew that something was gonna go on with Billy. There's gonna be a new bad guy, like Brenner. Um, the little Russian spy Terminator dude, I think, was kind of his replacement. Um, the magnetic field gets stronger because, remember, it was messing up the compasses. Now it's making magnets fall off of the fridge. The rats are going to help the mind flare and start biting and harming people, and that is kind of how he flayed people. Um, and then the mind flare comes to life. Billy dies. Okay, I really want to talk about this um, theory because I thought about it a really long time ago, like right after um, season two came out and Bob died. I think I talked about it with like Caitlin. Um, Billy dying. I thought from the very beginning when they were teasing that one of the main characters died that it was always going to be Billy because he's a main character but isn't like like a, a huge main character like if like Eleven died or something like that that would like change the entire course of the the show um but I also thought that everyone that has died in the show that has been like a main character their name has started with B so Barb, Bob, and then Billy all of their names have started with B or have a B somewhere in their name. Um, so I think that that kind of gave it away. So maybe in the fourth season, if someone else, I can't think of anyone with a B name. Robin, they just released her last name and her last name starts with a B. What if Robin dies? I'm not even gonna get into that. I'm gonna make a whole video on my season four theories later, but whew. Um, Heather is a lifeguard that goes missing. Um, I literally thought Bob was going to come back to life. He didn't. I was really, my silver cat theory was really off, but what are you going to do? So yeah, I hope you guys liked this video. Um, I have been making, I've been like planning this video for a while. So please like it, give it a thumbs up, please subscribe. Oh my gosh, I almost literally forgot. Thank you guys so much for 100 subscribers. I posted something on Instagram and Snapchat about it and also 10,000 views. That is insane, that's such a big number. What, that's crazy, thank you guys so much. Thank you guys so much. I love you. So I hope you guys liked this video. Don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe. Comment down below your opinion on the season. Comment down below your theories for season four. Comment down below if you want me to make a theories video for season four. Let me know where you all are at. Um, but yeah, go rewatch season three. It's great. Go support them. What they're doing is amazing. And I will see you guys next Sunday with a brand new video.